Hello biology class, welcome back. This is lesson seven, all about lung capacity. Uh, you know generally what lung capacity is, but what we're gonna do today is we're gonna put a whole bunch of terms to it. So we're gonna talk, uh, be able to talk about each stage in breathing and how much air is left in your lungs after you breathe out and what it means to be able to breathe all the way in and all the way out. And just a whole bunch of terms like that. It is going to um, focus around this graph. So I would get familiar with this graph. I'm going to show it three, four, or five times throughout this lesson. Uh, and as you can see, some of the key points that we have on the right are some of the words here. Actually, pretty much all of them are on here. We have vital capacities right here. We have tidal volume right here. We have reserve volume. Um, so that's talking about expiratory reserve and inspiratory reserve. And then we have the residual volume. So pretty much all these terms are within here. So we're gonna talk about this graph and we're gonna figure out this graph and what it means, okay? Okay. Um, you can see here that we have these short waves. And what these short waves are, and it ends this way as well, is that is supposed to represent uh, regular breathing, which we call the tidal volume. So a regular breathing breath all the way in and all the way out is your tidal volume. Um, we also have this large spike where we go, we breathe all the way in and we breathe all the way out as far as we can. So that's what's happening here. Normal breathing as in as far as we can, out as far as we can, back to normal breathing, okay? So that is what we are, that is what is happening in this line here, it is how much air is within your lungs. And this top line is max, this bottom line is zero. Um, so yeah, let's talk about it. Lung capacity. A person's vital capacity is the maximum amount of air the person can forcibly exhale after the largest possible inhalation of air. This is essentially your biggest breath, okay? And then what we're talking about is this part here. After your largest inhalation, what is the most amount of air that you can exhale? So that is this part right here. So vital capacity is from this top line to the bottom or the, this the second from the bottom line here so vital capacity is how much you can breathe in and then breathe out completely okay you are not capable of breathing out all of the air within your lungs if you did you your lungs would stick together all the all the pieces would and you would never be able to get air back into it so you do not breathe all the air out of your lungs but the maximum exhalation is how much you can breathe out of your lungs and that is the vital capacity. So your biggest breath in and out is your vital capacity. Um, the tidal volume, as we kind of mentioned before, is the amount of air inhaled or exhaled during normal, quiet breathing. So just regular breathing. So vital capacity is all the way in and out and then vital or tidal volume is just regular breathing. We have the inspiratory reserve volume which is the amount of air that can be forcibly inhaled after a normal inhalation. So we have a normal inhalation, which would be at the top of this line here, normal inhalation. Then how much more air can you breathe in? That is your inspiratory reserve volume. Uh, similarly, after you breathe out regularly, how much air can you breathe out? That is your expiratory reserve volume. So you'll notice that expiratory reserve volume, tidal volume, and inspiratory reserve volume total up to equal your vital capacity. So that would be a very um, good question. Uh, explain how your inspiratory reserve volume, your tidal volume, and your expiratory reserve volume uh, add up to equal your vital capacity. Why is that? How does this all work? Um, that would be a very good question. So the inspiratory reserve volume is the amount of air that can be forcefully inhaled after a normal inhalation. So breathing and then inhale. That is your inspiratory reserve volume. Expiratory reserve volume is the opposite. After a regular exhale, how much can be breathed out? That is the expiratory reserve volume. Expiratory, inspiratory, and tidal volume equals your vital capacity. So these are all key of how we breathe in. So this is an amount of air. Um, how we treat like your total lung capacity is we would, we would talk about your vital capacity. Uh, 
uh, that would be the volume that you can exhale after you've inhaled completely. The last thing we have, uh, oh, so here we go over the vital capacity is equal to the three uh, types that we talked about there, but we also have the residual volume. So the residual volume is the amount of air that is left in your lungs after you've pushed out as much air as you can. So after you've done the vital capacity breath in and all the way out, there's a little bit of air left over. And that is to uh, allow your lungs or to prevent your lungs from collapsing. So like I said, if you breathe every single particle of air out of your lungs, um, each layer of your lungs would be touching and there would be no way for it to be opened back up again when you breathe in. Um, it would essentially collapse your lung and not allow it to breathe, bring air in to let you breathe. Um, so you, you, you can witness some of this if you've got um, like quicksand will create a vacuum that doesn't allow you to pull it out. That would be the same thing that would happen um, with, with um, collapsed lungs. And that's the reason we have the residual volume is to stop those parts from touching and allow us to keep breathing. So again, the residual volume is down here. It's a lot more than we actually think it is, um, but it is the amount that is left in your lungs after you breathe out completely. So there are some breathing tests that we can take, um, you know, if there's a problem. So check out that uh, video. And then there is the spirometer. So the spirometer is kind of like a mouthpiece face mask that you breathe into that is able to calculate all of these things, your vital capacity, your tidal volume, your reserve volume, and your residual volume. It can all be calculated using this fancy device. Uh, if you check out that video, it also has a very good explanation of the lung capacity diagram. Um, so check it out. And if you have any questions, please let me know. It is this, this diagram is extremely important um, for your success in this lesson. So uh, make sure to study it. Uh, we all, then we'll have the lung capacity activity. If you need some of the materials, please let me know and I can provide those to you. Uh, obviously, uh, the materials are for your use only, um, but you can figure out a, uh, approximately what your lung capacity is and what your vital capacity is. Um, so do that lab and if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks very much for watching everyone.